Hey, and welcome back. We're going to be talking about visual assets. Now, I promise you visual assets will be a part of every single project you work on, whether it's imagery, illustrations, or iconography. Sometimes your clients may come to you with assets of their own. And the ugly truth is sometimes they're really bad. It's something that we got to learn how to navigate. But let's get into something else. Projects and deadlines, just sometimes they move so quick and you don't have that budget to hire a photographer or even hire an illustrator. And that sucks. But if you do have budget and if you do have the time, please do hire a photographer. It does make a world of difference, especially even with illustrators as well. Please hire them if you do have that budget and that time. So sometimes you do get lucky. Sometimes you have amazing assets to work with, whether they're good photography like this. This is something I quickly put together with Unsplash, but if your client comes to you with uh, something like this, this is something that's great to work with. Maybe they've had good photography done beforehand, maybe some illustration and iconography. I feel like iconography is never really the problem on this list. They generally trust a product designer or UX designer to do what's best. And the other scenario is that you're not so lucky. You may get stock photos. You know, stock photos are horrible. Some of them are okay, but most of them are bad and please don't ever use them. This is the moment you should really sit down with your client or product team or both and talk about ways you can improve on that because anything is really better than this. Now, there are a couple of resources that can help you. I really love using Unsplash. You can use their website or you can use the Figma plugin, which we'll get into later. Now this is totally free and you don't need to really credit anyone. All the images on here you can just use and you can also just search by keyword. You can search randomly, you can search by category. They have a great like foundry of imagery and some of it's really amazing actually. For illustrations, I love using Figma plugins like Blush, Illustrations, and there's Humans. So these are really great. This is Blush over here. Uh, it will allow you to kind of mix and match some illustrations. The only thing is it's paid, but you can get a good sense of if you like an illustration and want to use it later. This is called Humans. This is another plugin that allows you to kind of piece together different types of scenarios. You can use like a head, uh, whatever shirt you want, and we'll get into that as well. And Illustrations is another fun one. You'll get the SVG as well. As for Figma plugins, this is what's really great. And you can go out and buy illustrations as well, but sometimes they do get expensive. So I, I suggest using something like this and seeing where you can go from there. For icons, I love using material icons. They're easy to use, the website's easy to use. You can pick out whatever you want, whether the themes are filled, outlined, rounded, two-tone or sharp. You have the ability to just search by whatever keyword you want and you can easily grab an icon and upload that into Figma. Figma also has several plugins that we'll go over. Uh, one is called Iconify and the other one, they do have a material design plugin that we can use as well. So let's jump right into Figma and I'll show you how to work with different types of imagery and illustration and icons.